Um, hey there, game developers. It is I, Titan Hex. I am back finally after a long, long hiatus. Sorry for the wait. Uh, we are getting back into the tutorials that I started jumping into the intermediate part. Uh, we are right down smack in the middle of the intermediate. That means we are building little tiny systems out of the eventing and whatnot that we've learned. The systems that we're making are going to be great for mini games, custom menus, skill trees, things like that. Eventually, later on, uh, they're also good for little tiny puzzles and stuff. Uh, in this case, uh, a good GUI sort of sort of function uh, this is a great way to learn how to do indexing. That's the lesson, uh, as you can see by the title and all of that. So, an indexing uh, an indexing system is to me. What I mean by that when I when I say indexing is a system that keeps track of your selections through by saving them to numbers and then referencing those numbers to figure out what your selection was. So if I uh, was to press a button, uh, it would know that I pressed two, three, four, um, et cetera, et cetera, and then it would register that. Uh, we're simplifying it more into a, a button input system where if I press a button, it changes my selection. Sort of like um, a menu. Uh, the menu in RPG Maker is a fantastic example. We're going to actually open up the menu and sort of show off how it works. So, if I was to look at this and I, uh, I, I can hit up and down, I can cycle through the menu. Uh, I know that my choice is changing. Uh, the system using the system the RPG maker uses is a little different than what I'm going to explain it, but it makes a great example anyways. So let's say I have set up each selection to be a number. Um, so item is zero, skill is one, equip is two, three. Every time I hit up, or down, it changes the number. So when I hit down, it increases the number by one. So when I hit down, it goes from zero to one, one to two, two to three, three to four, five, six, seven, and then when it hits the very end, it resets it back to zero. Uh, this is a example of an indexing system. It keeps track of what my selection is based on the number that I'm on. So in programming, there's better ways to do that than this, but this is in its most core value it's most core system this is this is how we're we're looking at it um so every time i hit down the number increases by one until it gets to the end and it goes back down to zero and when i hit up it decreases by one until it hits zero and then it goes back to the very last selection so as you can see uh if i was to be on two it would open up the skill menu if i was on three it would open the equip menu status etc etc it's all very simple so this is sort of how it works. An indexing system would allow us to sort of keep track of our selection by increasing and decreasing a variable by one. Pretty easy. So we're gonna go ahead and start learning how to do that. In order to do that, you should have taken the variable course, the wait for button input course, and any other course that you might wanna change up. So I have a pretty cool little system that I'm going to go ahead and show you. This one is going to be a change main character. So in my settings, uh, in the database, I've already changed system settings to have only one person in the party, Harold. Um, and while the game is going, I'm going to go ahead and create a common event. Uh, it's going to be always going in parallel, switch zero on. The name is going to be party uh, character selector. So I'm going to be able to make it so that when I hit Q and W or page up and page down um, in the um, menu, it's going to go ahead and create a system where if I hit those buttons, it cycles my character, my main character through that per, uh, that party member. So let's go ahead. It's going to make more sense when I show you, so let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to start by changing the party member. I'm going to go ahead and add Harold. Uh, we're also going to create a... Actually, you know what? First things first, 
variable. Uh, variables are already made, but we need to name this one. We're going to go ahead and name this one uh, party member. And we're going to go ahead and let's see, add one. And okay. So, so these, this is just a small setup. We're going to move these around a little bit now that we have them. Uh, this is sort of the core of what we're creating. We're also going to need a conditional branch. And the conditional branch is going to say if um, the party member is equal to zero, it's going to be Harold in the party. So Harold is going to be the only person in the party. And now we can cycle through it. Um, if it's one, it's going to go ahead and add threes and remove Harold. This one's going to remove threes. And we're going to just keep a trend of that for every single party member that we can have. So this is a very uh, simple way to using events. Create a party system. We're also going to remove Lucius. So now uh, it's, this one uh, makes it so that if the party member variable is zero, Harold is in the party. If it's one, only Therese is in the party. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go for each party member. So now we're going to go two. And we're going to go three. So we're going to remove Harold. Remove threes. Remove. There. So in this case, we want Marsha if it's two and Lucius if it's three. There we go. So it's going to cycle through each time, uh, removing the ones that we don't want in the party and adding the ones we do want so that only that party member is left. So now we have a system that is always keeping track. Party change, well, player change. Huh. Okay, so we're gonna create, a, we're gonna turn on the player change very, um, switch inside of the game. Uh, for now, we are going to go ahead and make it so that if party member equals one, two, or three, um, zero, one, two, or three, it's going to cycle through. Now we need, uh, since we have the, the, the rules set up, the rules are um, if the variable is zero, only Harold, if the variable is three, um, then the party member is one, two is Marsha, three is Lucius. That is the setup, um, those are the rules. Now we have to have some way to change this variable, otherwise, it's going to stay at zero forever. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and create another one. It's parallel process, player change on, and we're going to create a button press system. So this is going to go ahead and increase that and decrease it by one if we're hitting a button. Now the wait for button press system is important in this because it sort of gives us a way to control uh, which character is in the party based on this system. Um, you can even create a, uh, a standalone menu that sort of lets you pick which party member you have. It's a little more convoluted, but uh, it, it would work pretty similar. So let's say page down is pressed. So these are going to be the two buttons that cycle through the party members. So when I hit page uh, down, it's going to increase or well, we'll make it decrease by one. And when we hit page up, it's going to increase by one. So uh, it's going to keep going. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a, a boundary, which means when it hits the maximum, it's going to just keep going and it's just going to be a mess. We want to make sure we have a way to reset the variable when we hit the maximum amount of party members we're allowed to have. So change party member um, whenever we're going to create a conditional branch that says whenever the party member variable is greater than three, because zero, one, two, three, and then we have four selections and we're including zero, so we always decrease by one. Um, and in this case, if it's less than zero, uh, so these are the two different ones. Um, whenever you're subtracting, you wanna check if it's less than zero, and if you're going up, you wanna check if it's more than the maximum. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add that it switches the variable to zero. If it's over three and it switches it to three, if it's over or if it's less than zero. And now we have a system that will keep track of the party member and change them as needed. 
change party buttons. Okay. All we have to do now is turn on the system. Uh, we can create a nice little auto run that will turn the switch on and then disappear. Player change on, control self switch A on, and then there, self switch A, it just gets rid of the event from ever starting up and doing that again. So now uh, we can go ahead and begin and we'll be able to change our party member using the buttons. So it's an indexing system. It keeps track of what party member we have. So it's keeping track of uh, our party member and changing it for us. Oop. <laughs> We're gonna wanna put a wait, otherwise it's gonna switch rapidly, way too rapidly for our fingers to keep track of. So um, again, part of the, that's just part of the wait for button press. You always wanna have a wait in there uh, after the button is pressed. So throw a wait. About 15 should be good inside the button press conditional branch. And that should work a lot better. So the way it's gonna work is, uh, well, this keeps track of it. And uh, we can also reference to know which, we can reference the game and know which selection we have chosen. So now if I hit Q, it's gonna switch. W switches the other way, so we can switch up and down. So now we're gonna go ahead and switch C. Neat little system where we can change which party member we have uh, playing. Uh, you can create a weird little game using this or a mini game or something. Um, or even just a game where you have one character who, with different abilities and you can switch skill sets. So I can make it so that there's four different versions of uh, Harold here, and Harold has four different classes that, you, or, and, or class abilities, class loadouts, whatever, that you switch through using Q and W. Uh, stuff like that can definitely work. And we can always reference it by seeing which, um, which variable the player is on. Uh, so we just reference if the player is on, on zero we know that it's Harold and then we're gonna say hey you're Harold so hey you're forward slash n one and then we got one just increase this to three And we go two, three, four. So whenever we uh, talk to this person, they're going to be able to reference our name because we, we are referencing the number that uh, we are using. So let's go ahead and give it a test. He'll know who we are because of the selection we chose. Um, you can even make a custom menu uh, whenever you're on Herald, you can make it so that you go to Herald's menu. menu. Uh, you can go to Lucius's menu, you can go to Marsha's menu, or uh, Herald's menu, or their skill tree. So uh, there is one thing, button press in parallel process does make it so that uh, you can switch characters in the middle of a text, uh, in the middle of text talking. I believe there's ways around that. Um, if I remember correctly, it's putting it inside loops, but I could be wrong. That's sort of how this works. Um, you can change selections, hitting buttons. Nifty little systems you can make using this, uh, as you can see, some cool stuff we can do. Um, I'm gonna get into a custom menu very soon here using indexing, pictures, things like that. Um, I've made it so that you can change uh, values up and down. Um, <laughs> there's, there's a whole bunch of little different systems you can make using this. Uh, you just got to get creative. So this is the indexing system. We keep track of our selection uh, by changing uh, the variable and then referencing it. So it gives us some control over variables. The player gets their own control over a variable. Um, and that may turn translate into a skill menu. That may translate into a custom menu of any sort. Uh, it could be a whole bunch of different things. So eventually I'll teach you how to make a skill menu using this and show picture. Um, so... Yeah, neat little thing like that uh, we can do some cool stuff with. 
So that is the end of the indexing tutorial. I hope you guys learned something to make an awesome little mini game or something uh, using your own creativity. So with that, uh, like, comment, subscribe if I've helped you in any way. Please uh, support me. The more you support me, the more I can make these videos, the more cool things I can show you guys, and the more that I can, can uh, contribute to this. Hopefully my Patreon starts coming together and you guys can support me through that way. Uh, it gives you a little bit of extra stuff, a little bit of extra leeway. I might have some cool little systems that you can download and then play with, um, little tutorials and things that you can use uh, in your own games or use as templates. Uh, I would love to make game templates that people can download and create a game out of, um, just pre-made stuff uh, using eventing. So a Patreon helps me do that. So. Uh, Thank you again, you guys. Have an amazing day and create an amazing game.